at 648. Annie is talking live with a cardiologist with the University of Maryland about the impact of stress to your heart and how to reduce stress in your life. April is National Stress Awareness, by the way, and it's all coming up at six. Plus, it's National Stress Awareness Month, so we're focusing on stress and its impacts on your heart. I'll be joined in studio with a local cardiologist for what you can do to avoid stress and keep your heart healthy. Here at WUSA 9, we know your heart health matters, and April is National Awareness, National Stress Awareness Month, so this morning we're focusing on health risk due to stress and its impact on your heart. I'm joined right now by Dr. Vaskin Decision, Chief Nuclear Medicine and Cardiologist at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Um, first of all, saying your last name was very stressful <laughs> for me, but over, I'm glad we got through that. Um, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we go through life stressing and we all experience it in different ways. Not only am I understanding that stress can really ruin your day, but it, it, can, it can also ruin your health. Um, yeah. Let's start with your specialty, the nuclear medicine stress test. What is yeah. that? A nuclear medicine stress test is you inject a small amount of radioactive drug in the vein and you uh, have the patient exercise on a treadmill. And what it does, it measures blood flow in absolute terms to the heart muscle. So the advantage of nuclear medicine stress tests, unlike the treadmill stress test, it improves the accuracy of the test mm. by 20%. The sensitivity of the test for treadmill is about 75%. With nuclear medicine stress test, we increase it to 90, 95%. So we're very accurate and precise in measuring blood flow. What does that mean? It means that you prevent unnecessary procedures. If it's a normal study, you can be very confident that your chest pain or shortness of breath is not related to your heart, and you look for other sources. And if it is positive, then you can decide to modify your risks. For example, if you have high cholesterol, mm -hmm. uh, you have a family uh, risk of coronary disease, uh, you, you uh, have high blood pressure, or you have risk factor modifications and then you follow the blood flow measurement again mm -hmm. and see if it's getting better and not necessarily have to have angioplasty or bypass surgery. So that's the advantage if you have a number that you can follow. Is it getting better with risk factor modification lifestyle uh, ad adjustments or is it getting worse? So this stress test really pinpoints accurately the stress and, and how it's affecting your personal health. Um, how can we alleviate some of the stress. I mean, we deal with stress every day yeah. in so many different ways. Mm. What are some things, especially when we're in the moment mm. and we're really heated or we're just really cluttered with the, so much stress, mm. how can we alleviate some of that? It's a great question, Annie, because we are under a lot of stress yeah. and there's strong emotions like anxiety, mm -hmm. fear, grief, or even um, COVID or hurricane, natural disasters can trigger mm -hmm. this is, is the surge of adrenaline. Now adrenaline may be good at times, but a uh, surge of adrenaline is actually supposed to be protective so that in case of uh, 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 fear, you have to either run or fight uh, 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 situations. But in, in, when it's overly, uh, adrenaline is, is very heightened, it can also damage your heart, and it's called broken heart syndrome. So even if you don't have underlying plaque or atherosclerosis of the vessels, mm -hmm. this high adrenaline can break and cause myocardial damage or heart muscle damage that can mimic a heart attack. So the idea is to have ways of minimizing your stress. Right. And there are uh, a number of sites that can, uh, strategies, you can do this, such as meditation, uh, you should have to sleep well, socializing. Uh, with COVID, for oh, example, we become less social, less sociable. I think interacting with people, taking deep breaths, and all of those things that we've kind of uh, moved away from right, with right. COVID, you have to go back to that. Uh, this can be found, obviously, on the websites on the CDC. Okay, Doctor, um, I wish we had more time, but we just don't. So we'll have to have a further conversation offline. But thank you so much for joining us no this problem. morning. It's been a pleasure.